um, I will just begin with a short introduction to the, to the collaboration we have this year between the, uh, the EIC and, and some EIT kicks, and specifically in this case, EIT Health. Um, the, the main idea is that both the EIC, the European Innovation Council, and the European Institute of Innovation and Technology are both uh, within pillar three of Horizon Europe, on the framework on Horizon Europe for the next seven years. And as such, we're both focused on boosting innovation in Europe. And that's why from the European Commission, there is a mandate uh, that these institutions uh, that are the main ones in pillar three have to collaborate and, and a memorandum of understanding was signed at, by the beginning of last year. That is translated into a collaboration pilot that is running this year with some specific kicks between them EIT Health. Uh, so uh, this collaboration between the EIC and EIT Health is focused on uh, improving or increasing connectedness, diversity, effectiveness, and sustainability of the uh, innovative uh, health sector in Europe. And the idea is to promote and to support startups from both organization pipelines uh, to get greater uh, networks, access to greater networks, increase financial opportunities, and business acceleration and development services. So within the framework of that collaboration, some startups are getting support from the EIC into some EIT health programs, and also some startups from EIT health are getting some support, specific support to the fast track screen to get access to the EIC, specifically to the EIC accelerator. And since I don't want to take any more time, because I think the important thing here is that uh, Catherine and if Eric can join, Eric uh, can explain about the EIC offer and some uh, about uh, their experience on the on the EIT Health and the EIC Accelerator. So specifically, Catherine will talk about tips and tricks for applying to the EIC Accelerator, letting us know a little bit about her experience or Elvito's experience uh, in both organizations. They've been very successful uh, in the EIT Health programs and also in the EIC. And, and I think it will be very interesting. If Eric Olivier is able to join, he will also talk to us about the specific opportunities for startups. As you know, mostly there are three uh, programs within the EIC Accelerator, the EIC Pathfinder for very early stage, let's say research projects in consortium, normally with hospitals, with uh, research institutions, but also sometimes startups can participate. The EIC, uh, the EIC, um, uh, sorry, the EIC Accelerator, of course, is the one with the biggest budget uh, within the EIC and is the one that most startups know because it has quite a big piece of a grant, but also blended finance that can get up to more than 15 million euros. So uh, that said, I'm going to leave Catherine Schreiber, Deputy CEO of Advitos GmbH, to explain you a little bit of her experience and some tips and, and tricks. And afterwards, we'll have a, a Q&A session. I hope Eric Olivier can join and also explain us a little bit more about the IC opportunities for startups. But right now, I will just leave you with Catherine. And just before that, let me also remind you that if you have not uh, joined already the AD Health Alumni Network, it will be um, <clears throat> it will be very interesting to, to join. I think it's a, it's a very dynamic and very uh, good opportunity to join the AD Health uh, community. So thank you so much. Uh, Catherine, let me know if you want me to share your slides or you want to share them yourself um yeah i'm ha happy if you can um share then that's i think then faster and easier um yeah so let me just open it i will stop and if i know i will stop sharing for a moment i will just open the slides and yeah i've i've um hello everyone um happy to be here here and happy to tell my experience about uh, the EIT um, programs and the EIC programs. And in case Eric is not able to join, I can look also into another um, presentation. I've not held myself, but I've seen at another event. So I can um, maybe also elaborate on some other programs, uh, but I would then need some like two minutes of finding this presentation. But first now <laughs> on this presentation, um, you can go to the next slide um, and uh, the next slide. So first I want to start with an introduction. So my name is Katharine Schreiber. I'm the co-founder and deputy CEO of Advitos, um, a medtech scale-up company. 
my background is I have a bachelor's in international business administration and um, I then um, studied mechanical engineering at the Technical University of Munich. And in my last year of studies, I joined actually at Vitos when it was, the project was running for six months. Um, the founder is a medical doctor. And um, that was 2006. Um, so since then, I, together with the founder, have not only developed um, a device from idea to market approval, but also a startup to a now fully certified medtech company. And my expertise is in fundraising and rest relations. Um, as I said, the development um, in, a co in compliance with the medical device regulations, um, strategy deployment and development and scaling a startup in general, like really from R&D, um, uh, then developing production and um, marketing and sales, et cetera. And next slide, please. So what is it that we have developed? Um, we have developed on kidney dialysis, so um, removing kidney toxins. We have developed a um, device that not only can remove kidney toxins, but also liver toxins, um, CO2, so supporting the lung, and also remove acid, so we can adjust the blood pH. And um, so we have the first four in one uh, organ support device. And that is important because on the intensive care unit, 60%, uh, so more than half um, of the patients dying on the intensive care unit actually die due to multi organ failure. And this is 500,000 deaths uh, in Western Europe and the US alone per year. Um, and as everyone knows, COVID-19 also affects um, different organs. And so our device, uh, can also or is also used in um, severely sick uh, COVID-19 patients. And in first clinical trials, we could um, show that uh, ADVOS, our ADVOS device can uh, increase patient survival from 20% up to 50%. And we have the EMARC, of course, it's, it is patented. Um, yeah, but we need to say that. And next slide, please. And... Uh, well, the, the um, Advitos, uh, I think it is important to say that the ESC accelerator pilot program is, is more focused on, on scale-ups. So it is helpful when you already can show um, some revenues. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's why I wanted to just say what was the status when we did the application. We were um, already fully certified metric company. We had um, 55 employees at the time covering all aspects necessary. Um, so we had R&D. Um, marketing and sales, supply chain and production, quality management, regulatory affairs and clinical affairs and, and things like that. And we had developed the device um, um, with the CE mark and also already validated our business model uh, with 1.9 million euros in revenues in 2019. And 20 hospitals as customers we were based in Germany. And we had already successfully um, written our own uh, grant applications on the like no local Bavarian level, we are based in Munich and um, German um, grants. And I think that is helpful um, when you also write this uh, ESC accelerator pilot grant application. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, so I just wanted first to go on to the journey of the EIC and the EIT, and then I will um, give some tips on our um, my um, experience with the application process. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. So actually, we have applied twice um, successfully and also successfully for the very first time. Apparently, this is not so um, uh, uh, normal as often people have to, or the projects have to apply um, uh, like a second time, but they can then use the feedback they get from the reviewers to um, implement it in their uh, revised um, application. So we had applied in 2019 for the predecessor of the ESC Accelerator Pilot Program. It was grant only. Uh, it was called the EU um, SME Instrument Grant. Um, and there we, um, our focus was on, um, it, it is an innovation and R&D focus um, in this grant money. So um, our focus was to improve ease of use, integrate um, Internet of Things um, for remote of access and maintenance, and also to uh, continue our patient registry, which is like a clinical trial-like um, setup. 
um, to increase um, medical evidence for our uh, device and therapy and to prepare uh, the market expansion. Um, and then uh, in 2020, basically we were, I think, among the last projects to only apply for the grant part. Then the um, EU shifted it to um, having a grant blended finance option, so not only grant and but also equity money, which is um, very very helpful. Um, so we had really thought and also just like discussed um, when is a good time to also apply for this um, equity part, um, and basically it was a little bit of for us for us it was. Uh, good coincidence because the um, European Commission then dedicated the March call in 2020 um, to a um, COVID-19 call and we had already treated patients with COVID-19 and show, um, could show um, beneficial results. That's why um, um, we decided quite short notice to apply again um, for this ESE accelerator pilot. Um, but with the main focus on this equity part and you are um, in general you can apply for a 2.5 million euro grant um, which this money has to be dedicated to innovation to research and development and you can apply for up to 15 million euros of equity investment um, um, yeah, and this is then the money like a traditional investor, they act like a traditional investor, you can use this money for um, also marketing activities, for market expansion, for uh, organizational growth, um, et cetera. Um, and yeah, we were um, also successful in this application and um, were even like with the first approval, we were um, also granted um, or approved to receive 14.5 million euro equity. But I have to say, um, at least in our case, um, they they did not lead uh, the the financing round. They um, they prefer to have a VC as lead investor, and then they um, the maximum what they um, invest is 50% of the um, overall um, volume of the financing round. So we closed a 20 million euro financing round and um, 10 million, so 50% of this round is um, provided by the ESC fund. Um, next slide, please. During uh, in all these years in 2019, 2020, and 21, um, I said um, we did not only um, do the application for the um, EIC fund um, support, but also the EIT health um, um, journey or EIT journey. And uh, what I think is, is the um, programs of the EIT health are um, more supportive regarding um, mentoring, training, and and providing, yeah, en enabling you with with um, skills. And so um, what we took part in was the, in 2019 was the uh, EIT Health Catapult um, competition where we won the third place. Um, and we also used uh, the, the voucher of the EIT Health Mentoring and Coaching Network. Um, in 2020, um, we were taking part in the EIT Health Finance Booster program, which I think is also very beneficial because you get a better idea of uh, these um, financing contracts about financial planning, business planning, and um, about, as I said, the terms of um, what to look out for in these investment agreements, et cetera. Um, and we also, through the EIT, we also took part in 20, actually it was already 2019, there was a joint um, event uh, at the NASDAQ Stack Stockholm from all EIT, um, uh, Kids, like different uh, kicks and that's where we also got into contact with EIT Digital and at that time they had already provided this access to finance um, program with the, where they really they select 10 um, companies per year and they provide them with hands-on support regarding financing um, or fundraising activities so they um, are really like they act as a quality gate they look at your business plan your um, investor presentation they um, give you feedback on what to put in the um, data room for the due diligence and then they actually actively 
um, reach out to financial and strategic investors um, to help you close your financing round. And um, this has been extremely helpful for us in raising the 20 million euro financing round because um, it was not only that we did it during the COVID-19 pandemic um, where every uh, VC was first, like the first three months of the pandemic, they were first focused on their portfolio companies and, and not really um, looking for new investments. Um, but it was also helpful because they really, really reached out and um, searched um, for, for investors that um, fit to our product, to our uh, company stage. And um, raising 20 million euros is, um, I think in Europe still a challenge because many of the VCs um, do smaller rounds. Uh, and then being in a, a company that develops medical hardware, not medical, uh, like digital, um, a digital device was also, it's also uncommon. So we had some challenges and that was really helpful to be supported by the EIT um, and an EIT's organization with all their, their networks. Um, and yeah, that led to closing the financing round in 2021 with um, um, the EIC being one of the investor and a French VC being the lead investor. And just to mention it, there's also another program provided by the European Investment Bank, this is a social innovation tournament, um, where it's also um, a, a, a very helpful program um, because you can take part in additional trainings and um, pitching competition after that um, program. I actually currently in Lisbon um, on a training workshop regarding scaling um, provided by this in European Investment Bank Institute. And um, yeah, to complete it um, regarding the um, EIC application programs, we, we used our national contact point, um, which is called Bavarian Research Alliance. They do support um, Bavarian-based companies uh, in the EIC applications. They don't write the applications, but they explain certain terms or certain um, um, categories or um, um, Things that you need to that they help you to understand what are what to um, look out for in the application process. Next slide, please. Ah, yeah, and there is now the EIT Health has also established a similar program like the EIT Digital Access to Finance. It's called uh, Venture Center of Excellence, and as I understand it, they are providing uh, similar support um, in fundraising and market access, and. I just can say it's really helpful because we would have never been able to reach out to so many uh, investors. Um, altogether, it was around over the um, time um, between 150, 200 investors. And uh, also they can um, really check um, in, 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 uh, like, uh, in different databases um, when was the last time this fund has closed a deal? Um, are they at the end of their life, uh, of this lifespan of the, of the fund or at the beginning? And so they can really also advise you and give you feedback after a pitch um, uh, from the investors. Um, so, and it's for a small fee, it's not for free, but uh, it's really, it's, uh, I think it's reasonable. Next slide, please. And what I also wanted to point out is that uh, we've really, um, it's not only the training or the visibility um, we've received uh, through the EIT Health um, programs mainly actually now, it's um, also, uh, we have um, increased our network for valuable experts. I really need to point that out because I've worked with uh, them and um, really, um, I think they, they are great. And for example, with Beth Sudan, she's a pitch coach. Um, I met her at the EIT Health Catapult DACH training. Um, so the, the, the very first part of the EIT Health Catapult competition. And um, uh, so we actually um, worked with her on preparing our pitch in 2019 and in 2020. Um, regarding the EIC application um, specifically. 
And um, Ivan Ruiz, I um, um, met him through an actually EIT Health alumni webinar in August 2021 and spent one hour um, improving my pitch for the um, SIT tournament. And I've also provided um, in, one slide, in one slide in this presentation, I'm sure you will get the presentation um, after this webinar, where both of them give like have an um, internet link where with some tips regarding so Beth Susan focuses on um, how like how to present online regarding lightning, regarding what to wear, regarding um, things like that. And Ivan Ruiz, he's focusing on how to to engage better, how to present, um, like what to use you, how to use your hands, um, use pause and things like that. So I think um, they they gave good advice um, through the mentoring and coaching network. Um, we found Martin Giese. Um, he's a uh, uh, with them, we did a negotiation um, training, um, which I was also thought was very helpful. And he also focusing not only on investment negotiations, but also like, for example, sales uh, and, and purchasing. Um, and uh, it was also helpful because we could really also discuss like, certain things in our investment case and how to negotiate and get some advice on that. And the other one, I and yeah, um, regarding the in the EIT Health Finance Booster, it's not only training; it's also you get assigned a mentor. And our mentor was Robert Mullen. Um, he uh, advises startups on collaboration with corporates and and US establishment, and provided us a great checklists and things like that. So. This is another part which you can really use um, the EIT uh, health programs to find um, uh, experts that, that are of great value. Um, I've also taken part in the EIC six month minimum leadership program. They started it last year first only for EIC beneficiaries. As I understand it, they've now broadened it um, also to EIT um, beneficiaries. And uh, this is a focus on, on women, you get a mentoring um, for six months, um, more focus on your personal growth. You um, can also look again for a business coach, um, more on skill development or discussing company strategy. Um, and you have like, I think six um, half day trainings, which are um, focused on certain um, aspects, but also really help you to, to increase your international network to get visibility. Um, what we received, and I'm not, I think they've changed it now a little bit, is that we also did um, get business coaching through the EIC um, accelerator programs. Um, my recommendation regarding this is that you really need to define a pre precise, concrete project to tackle and to find it's it's not so easy to really find um, a specific coach. Uh, many coaches are more like based on focus on strategy. Um, and that uh, in our experience was a little bit difficult to 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 get um, there than something concrete out of it. But um, I also tried one coach um, who was more on media training on how to handle the press and how to interact with um, journalists. That was very helpful. Or another one was on how can we um, um, develop our organization to scale and what, uh, what, what measures do we need to take. So that was actually very helpful. And as an ESC beneficiary, you get also additional pitching opportunities and they offer um, summer and winter schools with additional training. But I think the, that's more in, they are trying to building that up. Um, there, the EIT programs uh, really um, have already like um, a lot more to offer. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, and now regarding the application process. Next slide, please. Um, so I'm here. I've put a lot of text in the in the slides because I expect you to get them. It's really just to to give you an, an idea of uh, how long how long it takes. And I think the best uh, example is really the the first um, column on the left. It took us about uh, I would say I really would recommend two months of um, to to um, work on the application. We started in February consulting with this national contact point. 
um, on really defining what kind of project can we um, um, design or what is what for what um, tasks do we get funding and so we are really working um, then April, May, May on the uh, inviting the application and submitting it at the beginning of June. Um, in 2019, the pitch was in front of the GEO in Brussels. Um, and, um, in, um, and then we got in, in July. So uh, about four weeks later, we got the notice. And two weeks after that, we, got, um, the, um, we had our interview or the pitch presentation. And um, three weeks later, we got informed that we got accepted. And the grant process was very smooth. And actually, we had like six weeks of um, um, validation process where they validate that you are that you're actually really a, a small or medium sized startup. They validate your bank account. You have to um, enter some additional stuff in the online platform, but it was very smooth. And then you get the grant signature, and um, the the project um, could have actually been started in October, but we preferred to start um, um, in December. Um, well, I wanted to mention that, of course, we had written business plans, we had all the text already um, in, uh, in English, and we had some presentations, um, which we couldn't use. Um, the 2020 application was a little different because it was so short notice um, <laughs> that um, uh, we really did it in a fast way. They know the, they published it uh, on the 14th of March and that they would dedicate this call, um, um, this ESC accelerator call for COVID-19 um, applications. So we used basically the application from the last year and our, and we had of course prepared our business plan or our presentation to start a um, financing route or we had started our, our financing route. So had we had all the documentation already ready, that was the only way why we could um, submit um, an, an additional application um, so fast. At that time, it was an online pitch. Um, so, but and again, the whole process was pretty, um, I think, fast for, for a grant um, application. Um, a month, about five, six weeks after the submission, we got the invitation to the online pitch, which then was two weeks later. And then, yeah, it was an online pitch. As I understand it, we had it with Cisco WebEx. As I understand it, now they are doing with it MS Teams. And then again, like two or three weeks later, we got the acceptance confirmation. And again, a smooth uh, grant um, validation process. And we started the, the project, the grant project in October. And the nice part about the grants of this ESE accelerator is that you get a pre-financing, like around 40% of the money um, is um, you, you really get paid with start of the project. Um, I don't know of any other grant, at least in Germany, where you get a prepayment. Um, so that's very um, beneficial. Regarding the equity part, um, that was um, after that was then done after the grant um, um, validation part. So, and it is actually done by the European Investment Bank. They are doing this due diligence process because they are more, they are used, they have already um, things like uh, due diligence processes in place because they, they um, offer this venture debt program for later stage um, companies. Um, so they are familiar with doing due diligence, um, et cetera, and they still continue to do that um, for the EIC fund. And again, um, it was um, a very um, smooth process. We had a very, um, like a very knowledgeable um, and experienced investment officer. We agreed to um, use the EIB's database um, uh, because they said that's easier for them to access because they have very, very high um, IT um, uh, rules. And um, so we uh, loaded up uh, or uploaded um, our due diligence um, documents on their database, had some few questions and um, like also in around six weeks, uh, the, this process was done. They then we had, as we did not only do the grant applications, we also were performing our um, uh, fundraising activities. We had also identified um, um, two potential lead investors. 
um, they were then we brought them into contact and um, basically they were aligned with with um, with their with the, the, the basic terms of investment and so the investment commission officer could uh, get the approval um, um, for the investment by the investment committee of the ESC fund in December. And basically then um, their part was done and they just waited for the lead investor to um, continue their uh, due diligence and um, the contract negotiations, everything else was really done with the lead investor, a VC. And so in mid 2021, we closed our financing round um, with the ESC fund um, as part. And um, next uh, slide, please. Uh, regarding the online platform, um, I think in the beginning it can be very overwhelming. Um, so allow yourself and take yourself, take time to familiar um, familiarize yourself with the tenders portal. There's also a manual um, that uh, tries to guide you uh, through the steps, um, yeah. and. Um, and also make sure to register your company early because it also needs to be verified. Um, as it is, this online platform keeps or gets um, uh, adjusted or improved continuously. So I've also talked to another founder who um, did the successfully the application process last year. And um, we agreed that it is very helpful to have several people um, be be registered there, um, but she said that the only um, one who creates the, the, the account is has full access to the application. Um, so uh, this is so be really careful who you um, who starts uh, this this um, application process. And um, so in my case, it was I was the contact parent, and I got also the, all the email notifications. But in her case, it was um, this uh, really the, the, the CEO, the only one who got all the email notifications and it was not possible to change that. And another um, aspect maybe it's that um, you have to fill in all the, the parts into this online forum and um, apparently this ethics self-assessment is not as only accessible once you have um, started so the submitting process. So just have that in mind when you do this um, application that there's still a part to do. It's, it's, not, it's not taking too much time, but still have it in mind um, when you plan your application process. Um, next slide. So in general, regarding the application, um, so regarding writing the proposal, um, I would really recommend you to, um, to not edit, edit it in this online port um, platform because it's, at least as we work it, um, it was like um, three to five employees from all different um, departments um, working on this application. Um, and you can, um, multi-edit, you can track changes, you can comment on certain sections, and this is not possible in this online platform. Um, but just um, to let you know, it's still only um, um, this word um, template, if you put every question in, it's, it's already 30 pages. So it's quite um, uh, a lot to, um, to, to put in. Um, so really also plan at least two months um, on working on this application as you will not be doing it full time, you also have your day to day businesses. Um, and as I said, we, we could use a lot from our written business plan. Um, and we could uh, also, yeah, um, so that was helpful. And we did really have um, uh, good advice and review done by our national contact point. Uh, so that's why I would also recommend you to, to reach out to your national counterpart point, but I have the website um, in the next slide. Regarding the pitch, um, what you submit uh, for the pitch deck um, is that you need, really need to use it. You cannot adjust it because um, this you have the risk of um, being disqualified. Regarding backup slides, um, so it's like a it was like 10, 15 minutes of um, pitch. And then you have, we had um, 30 minutes of uh, Q&A. When it was on site, 
we were able to, um, the presentation was still on and we were able to actually um, show some backup slides um, to be able to answer certain questions. And when it was online, um, the presentation was stopped and we were not able to show any backup slides. It was three people, they, um, they advised to have three people, like regarding the technology, regarding marketing and sales and regarding finance. Um, that's what we did. And um, we um, it felt that that was really a good way to do it. And as I mentioned before, we um, had one week of intensive preparation with a pitch coach, um, really working precisely on on presentation, presenting these 10 minutes of pitch and really making every word um, count. And we have rehearsed it with uh, different audiences. Next slide, please. And here is just where you can you can also click them. I collected some um, helpful, I think, helpful internet um, websites regarding this creation. And as I said, every country has a national contact point um, that can advise you and support you in uh, the the um, application process. Um, we have worked with the um, Nationale Kontaktstelle, which is like German-wide, and the Bavarian Research Alliance, which is focusing on um, Bavarian um, uh, companies. And I know from the German part that they also offer online, free of charge, online um, workshops, um, where they guide you from, through the application process. And they have also workshops on how to um, then manage the project. Um, another part is the Enterprise Newark Network. Um, they sometimes um, um, also offer support in grant writing. Next slide, please. Yes, and regarding the pitching, these are the two resources I, I, I think are helpful to just um, look through um, to, to work on your pitch. And I think next slide. Ah, yeah, and so that was the application process. Um, as I said, um, the, the processes regarding the grant agreement and the equity investment are pretty smooth. I just want to really to say, don't hesitate to reach out to the assigned project officer or the investment officer. Um, and um, also don't hesitate to contact the, EIT, uh, the IT services of the platform. If you have any technical issues, they really solve it um, within 24 hours usually. So I think that's the last question. Uh, slide, and I'm happy to answer questions. And yes, you can reach out to me via LinkedIn or via email. Thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine. So that's been a super interesting presentation. I'm really happy um, to have you have uh, here today. I think it was super useful. And I think we got also some questions about whether we're going to share the, the slides and the presentation. So the presentation is being uh, recorded and we will, we will uh, share it later. The link, and we will also share the presentation. Uh, of course, if the, if the <clears throat> panelists agree with that, but I think Catherine already said that she's willing to share. That. Um, now, I think Eric, Eric Olivier Palou, he's the senior policy advisor at the, the European uh, Investment uh, the EAC. So he's here. I don't know, Eric, if you can. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, Olivia? we yeah, can okay. hear you. Fine. So good, morning. You... good morning, everybody. <laughs> Happy to be. Right. Been able to join you, it's been a bit, a bit difficult. Yeah, I'm totally uh, sorry about that. <laughs> no, 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 it's not your fault. Uh, no, I, I was very impressed by the presentation performed by Catherine. It's uh, perfect, it's absolutely everything you need to know about an EIC application. I wouldn't be able to tell more, in fact, in terms of process, because I remember I, I, I chaired some, some panels, uh, so, some, uh, some juries uh, two years ago, and it's exactly been like Catherine has described it in, in uh, through her slides. And so I, I could not say uh, anything else. But what I would like to, uh, to underline is the fact that the EIC selected a very important uh, amount uh, 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 of companies that are health related. Huh? We, under the EIC accelerator, I think about half of the companies we are selecting, selecting are health related. It's very important that the kick uh, uh, health continues to work uh, in this uh, uh, direction to help the, the stemming companies to and then to reach uh, the level of the EIC accelerator. So it means TRL 5.6 now. Um, 
It, we, you, your kick is a very important partner for the EIC, and I can see on my, on my Excel sheets that you've been supporting many uh, of the companies we selected last, last year, previously, and Advitos is the perfect example uh, of the companies we are supporting, deep tech, really innovative, uh, uh, in the COVID uh, situation, it was absolutely uh, the the, the, the profile we were searching for. So a very good example and a very practical and far off experience uh, presented by Catherine shows that, demonstrate that she was exactly uh, in, in, in the way, in the right way. So also uh, to know that we have a memorandum of understanding between VEIT and VIC signed, I think about two years ago. It's not yet perfect in terms of implementation. Our agency is still young, only uh, one year of existence, uh, but everybody is working uh, to improve the situation and to make things go uh, very smoothly. Uh, in, in particular, we have what we call the fast track for, uh, for companies that are stemming from EIT kicks and notably EIT health. And this fast track should help, uh, should speed up the process uh, for the selection of the company. It should help, but do remember that it's still the same selection process at the end. You still have to go uh, to the uh, remote evaluation and then the juries, uh, the, the juries and in front of the jury, and it's, it's very selective, I must say. Uh, if I had to present uh, some slides, maybe I can try. Uh, it's just below there and say, yeah, screen. Voilà, that's it. That's it, just to, just to, well, those are the usual slides and nothing uh, very original. I could try to have it directly. Mm -hmm. No, well, no uh, just, just the, the, what, a few words about the EIC, about the budget. I can, you can see there what is uh, the main features of the EIC, so the budget, but the, the fact that it is unique in the world. This is important because it's a, it's a European innovation in itself. Uh, we designed something that did not exist yet. Uh, we took some ideas from uh, US DARPA and uh, US uh, uh, agencies of the same kind, like ARPA E, but still it remains unique. But we know that we are studied by many other uh, powers in the world and they are about to copy uh, the, the EIC, probably in the next year. And you, you have also to know that we created the EIC fund which is uh, about to become the largest uh, venture capital deep tech investor in, in Europe. Uh, on the 10 billion euros of the budget, we expect that over three will go to investment through the EIC fund. Also what Catherine has very well described is that the uh, VIC accelerator in particular is very innovator centric. And, and we are still by a board, a board of 20 members that are all of them, or most of them in fact, uh, leading innovators. Um, what I can say as well, what you, which is important, sorry. Yeah, you can see there, uh, the health is on the uh, bottom left of the slide. So you can see the different uh, uh, thematics, uh, the different areas where we have some projects, either through the EIC accelerator or the EIC pathfinder for uh, but breakthrough research. Uh, I, I recall break, uh, Pathfinder is for uh, experimental research in, uh, in, uh, in emerging and future areas of research. Um, what is important there also to, to show is the, the whole innovation uh, process that the EIC is supporting through its different instruments. Uh, there are three main instruments, but do remember that we have always also, also the Women Leadership Program to support women innovators. We try to develop a special support for widening country to, to bridge the gap between the West and the East of Europe. We also have prizes and for all beneficiaries, we are uh, providing business accelerator services which is uh, very helpful. It's the glue for everything. In fact, the bass have a glue for everything. But let's come back to the three main instruments. So the Pathfinder, the transition, which is a relatively new, last year only it was set up, and, and the accelerator. So the Pathfinder is for TRL one, two, three, four. 
It's for uh, uh, early stage research on breakthrough technology. It is led by now, it's very uh, led by uh, program managers. We have uh, eight to 10 program managers, 10 in September, that are uh, establishing portfolios of projects, which is very important in terms of, uh, of governance and management. So under Pathfinder, you have consortia and the grants are up to three to four million. So uh, you may remember that uh, previously we had the Future Emerging Technologies Program, which we call FET, uh, FET Open and Proactive. When you reach a TRL four, then you are able to, you are eligible to go for, for a transition, which is the new instrument. And transition helps to uh, maturate the technology from the proof of concept to its validation. So it's from TRL four, I would say, until TRL six. Uh, and then uh, in the same time, you are developing a, a business, uh, a business plan, business model, so to be ready for the market. And there you have grants up to 2.5 million, either for a small consortium or for a, a, a mono beneficiary uh, company when the company is already established. And finally, when you reach TRL five, six, it's better to, to reach six, in fact, you can be eligible to the accelerator. Then you, uh, you want to scale up. It's, uh, the, the idea is to scale up as fast as possible on the market and finish the development whenever necessary and go uh, to uh, business activities. And so it's, uh, the support is what we call mostly blended finance. We are also grant only support, but um, not so many uh, projects are uh, grant only supported. Uh, blended finance is a grant up to 2.5 million for, uh, for the research that has to be uh, completed. And then for the next step under TRL9, uh, until TRL9, sorry, you have the equity component or assessment up to 15 million euros. This is what we call the successor of the uh, SME instrument. So maybe for last year, you can see on this slide, uh, everything that was supported under the free, uh, the free instruments for uh, about, uh, I remember, well, 1.2 billion euros. So under the accelerator, we selected 164 companies after two cutoffs, June and, and October. Um, for the Pathfinder, there were uh, 80, 80, 90, 95 uh, consortia selected. Some of them uh, under some challenges, as you can see on the left side of the, of the slide. And the new, uh, for transition, the new uh, instrument, we are only uh, 45 uh, uh, projects selected. Uh, in fact, it's, it was not completely open to the uh, outside world. It's just for a Pathfinder project or ESC project or a second pillar project and so on. It's still under, under, uh, under, under test, under pilot, I would say. Um, this year, we can go to this year. As you can see, uh, some deadlines are already passed. But uh, still, we have uh, a deadline in, uh, in October. We had a deadline last week, in fact, for the accelerator on the 15th of June. So the last, the last cutoff, the last deadline is set on the 5, 5 of October for the accelerator. But we still have uh, uh, Pathfinder challenges in October and transition at the end of September. I think Catherine has described it relatively well, but under Horizon Europe, the uh, EIC accelerator, accelerator selection process is a bit different. You can see on this slide how it works. Uh, there are different steps. For, uh, for, EIT, uh, for EIT companies that uh, go through the, uh, uh, the fast track, you are skipping step one. So it's, it's important to know that you only uh, win some time, in fact. But you can do it any time, which is important uh, for the step one. You can go directly for the step two if, if you have the fast track. And then you have the full assessment by the uh, evaluators. And if you have a go, su uh, su sufficient goes for the different evaluators, you, you will pitch in front of, of the jury. So it's an interview, as uh, Catherine described it very well, uh, it's an interview with up to six EIC jury members, and it's the, 
uh, it's decisive time uh, to see we, we, to determine whether you are uh, selected, you have a go and you have the funding, or uh, if you fail, you can get, you can have received, uh, be awarded the seal of excellence, which provides you the opportunity to get funded by another funder. Uh, you also keep the possibility to, to, to benefit from business acceleration services, which can be very important. And there are few cases of no-go uh, in case the jury uh, identifies the big flaws in your proposal. But anyway, you can, uh, if you get a seal of excellence or uh, even if you are rejected, you have the possibility to resubmit what, which can be uh, very helpful also. You can improve your proposal and come back. Um, just just uh, the last, uh, the last uh, uh, things we, uh, we added this year in the work program 2022, uh, you have what we call the, uh, the possibility to have investment above 15 million for strategic areas. Uh, this is a pilot for this year and it's limited to 15% of the budget, but you have to know that this, yeah, there are some possibility to get more money, even more money. We also have this year what we call the EIC scale up 100 initiative. So to identify the 100, uh, the 100 potential unicorns from EIC portfolio and national schemes and support them to uh, get uh, uh, as fast uh, as possible, the status of unicorn. And uh, we also want to establish a, a high level group on late stage scale of financing to assess the case for first pressure in case we need uh, more actions at uh, uh, next uh, uh, or next series uh, of investments. Uh, it is particularly the case in the, in the area of quantum uh, when uh, a lot of money is necessar necessary to, uh, to scale up. Voilà. But what I, I wanted to say very quickly, if there are questions, I am ready to answer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eric Olivier. I think that, that's been really clarifying and very, very interesting. Um, <clears throat> so to all participants, if you have any questions, you, you see you have this option down here of, of questions and answers. So uh, please include them there because there is no option to to speak uh, within this, this model of, of Zoom. It's a, it's a webinar Zoom. So if you have any questions, please include them in the, in the chat in this uh, questions and answer uh, possibility. I would like to ask you, Eric, about the, the EIC transition. So right now it's close to the ERC and, and Pathfinder that they know, but you also mentioned Pillar 2 uh, projects. Uh, do you envision in the future it's going to be different or? It, Something yeah, it, it will change over time. We are still on the pilot phase, so we are. It's it's only open to projects from the from Horizon 2020 or uh, from uh, Horizon Europe, uh, and it's it's planned to be open to be outside the world as early as possible. But the decision is not yet taken. Maybe next year, maybe the year after. I I, I don't know. In fact, it's a decision to be taken with national authorities. I think the the program committee will have a word on that. Okay. And also the board, uh, the IC board. So it's a common decision to be taken over time. There is a question here. It says, are there programs for, for anthropological projects? I think it's necessary to extend personal personalization with it. Mm. I don't know if, if, do you know if there are problems for anthropological, anthropology? Mm, not, it's, it's not supposed to be deep tech, and that, that's the problem, I'm, I'm afraid. Yep. Um, another question is, if you come from fellow programs of EAT Health, the, the Catalyst program, is, is, is it necessary to start from Pathfinder? Alors, Pathfinder is the first step. In fact, if you have a long-term uh, project, uh, if you have a very good idea and a long-term project, Probably uh, the easiest door to open the EIC is the Pathfinder, but it has to be through a consortium and it has to be under the, uh, uh, I would give a guidance of a program manager, which is in charge of your, of your sector. So uh, I think then uh, it has to be very, very early to get contact with the program manager or his team to determine whether your ID can bring something in his, uh, in his, uh, in his planification, I would say in his uh, vision, who her vision can be a woman. Uh, so, so Pathfinder is the very, very interesting first step in case you are still at the level of the idea. Exactly, I guess 
No, if you are already in a program like the Catalyst from, I, I don't know exactly which TRL you are, but also depending on their TRL, they, they can also apply directly to the accelerator. There is no need to apply first to the Pathfinder. I don't know if that's also David. No, if you have TRL 5.6, uh, forget the Pathfinder. Exactly, yeah, okay, perfect. Um, another question by Neringa Seperin. Uh, hi, she says, how much time do you recommend to reserve for filling the long application form for the AC accelerator? I think both of you, Eric or, or Catherine, can reply this question. One, one from one side and one from the other from the experience after writing it. So, I don't know who wants to to reply that question. Maybe Catherine. Yeah, yeah it's um, from my experience, and it actually is aligned with the other founder I talked to. Uh, we really recommend uh, two months, and not not really really full time, but almost full time. Usually, it's it's a very um, uh, yeah intense process, I would say. Yeah, it takes a lot of time and also, um, yeah, work. Yeah, in, in fact, if you have good good experience of this such of ex ex exercise, I think two months is a good is good uh, uh, objective. Uh, if if it's new for you, it will take a little more time. True, I agree. I'm sorry, yeah, <laughs> I agree. Uh, <laughs> yes, we had because we had a written business plan, we had a pitch deck, so that's right. Uh, if you're completely new. Uh, yeah really start start basically start now when you want to apply in october and just have time for um others to re review it um, maybe i can add to that question do you recommend to to uh, to take the counseling of a, of an expert you know like consultors or so some some experts to support you in your writing I, I think that's a good idea so now i think you commented that in your presentation well um we didn't pay anyone we really use the national contact point um or the, the from the actually it's a they are part of the EEN net, the European yep. Network, network and they specifically offer some support regarding the ESC accelerator um, application. And they, of course, do not write the application, but they um, first they explain you certain te terms or how specific or how detailed you have to be, for example, regarding the project plan, regarding um, also uh, milestones and, and deliverables and, and things like that. But that was really, really helpful. And um, uh, this I really recommend, um, but uh, I also recommend to really write the application yourself because you also have to um, present yourself. You're not allowed, there's not any uh, consultant allowed to take part in the pitch, um, 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 in, the, in the pitch, and you really have to be, um, know what you've written in the, in the pitch because they, they, the jury has um, read your application and they can ask very detailed questions. So you, you have to be really um yeah know what you have written yeah if i, if I can say the word about it consultants is an issue for us uh, and for the companies we are supporting because it's uh, it's cost it, it costs a lot of money in fact that's a problem so you should as catherine said you should first use your internal resources but also ncp support ean support there is some EIC also EIC support paid by EIC to develop your, your, your full application after the, first, the step one. So it's three days of consulting. It can be very helpful, of support, mentoring, coaching. It can be very helpful. And consultants can be hired, but as an ultimate option, I would say. Ultimate option if you really uh, need some help on a specific field, but you, you cannot manage uh, otherwise. But do remember that there are good consultants and not so good consultants. And all of them are very expensive. <laughs> totally agree. Uh, let me also add on that that uh, this year we had the fast track scheme, and through the fast track scheme, uh, as you know, um, we give support to some uh, startups that are in our in our portfolio that have participated in some specific programs uh, to access to the second stage of evaluation of the EX accelerator. I don't know if how it will be the next edition or even if there will be a next edition of the fast track, but. Uh, we are also supporting companies to prepare their, their, their application to stage two. So there, there is also support. So I, I say that because here, uh, most of the, the people attending to this webinar probably are EAT Health alumni and might be eligible for, for that if, if uh, a fast track is also happening this year. I don't see any more questions. Eric, I would like to ask you a question that is related to us is uh, as about the top 100 call that you just mentioned. So what's it? What's the? Because I, as I understand, there's only one 
um, project that can be selected. So it's, it's expected to uh, select just one um, institution. So what's the target? It's, it's institutions big, uh, because that's not for a startup, not to be able to select the top 100 companies uh, to become unicorns in Europe. So how, how is that expected from the EAC? Uh, um, what do you expect? Uh, difficult to say. It's a, it's a new experience. Uh, we have a, a, a coordination support action uh, of, I think, 7 million uh, uh, for uh, an external uh, consortium that will uh, have to uh, identify uh, these companies. So it's a process. It's a long term process. I'm not able to tell you much more about this. It will come in the next uh, next month. Uh, it's very ambitious. In fact, it's very ambitious to, uh, to, to be able to identify the, the right companies, so to, to bring them a maximum support as fast as possible, so they, they can grow and fa very fast uh, and be, uh, to scale up and become unicorns. Uh, this is something new. If there was a pilot called Scalable, or oh, I don't remember, Scalable, Scalation program uh, about this, so it, it showed that it was possible. But uh, the experience is still uh, to, 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 be, uh, to be performed. It's clearly a very I hope we have program. a company from, from the EIT at least one. Uh, yeah, no, no, we are, we are thinking of it. <laughs> what we can do about this. At Vitos, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> Vitos sounds actually a good candidate, I would say. <laughs> very good candidate. Thank you. <laughs> OK, I don't see any more questions. And we are over 11, it's 11.05 already. So I think it's... it's uh, Great, I think it's been a great uh, pitch by both of you, very interesting and, and very clarifying. I hope the, all the attendees today here get a much clearer idea on how to, uh, how to prepare an application to any of the three programs at the EIC, but of course, the main one I, I would say for startups in the health are probably, it's probably the EIC Accelerator. Um, thank you so much, both the panelists and all the attendees. And, and as, I, as we just mentioned before, uh, we will be sharing I think the, the recording will be shared on YouTube and the presentations, as I said, if Catherine and Eric, uh, you agree with that, we will share them directly with the, with the attendees. So thank you so much and hope you have a, a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. So, Bye, thank you. <laughs>